crafty paste the angel the angel signs okay it's about time for me to do another finnabar inspired canvas um i'm going to be using a dg that i created specifically for a 12 by 12 canvas that's what i'm going to be working with uh, i'm going to be working with a lot of prima products um from paper flowers to their art basic um uh, Three, uh, mixed media collections. I'm also going to be using some paints and some uh, micro beads, and uh, I am going to be using a lot of Lindy Stamp Gang sprays um, in this project. Definitely going to be using one of my favorite products from Prima. Oops. This is okay. Off subject, real quick. The only thing I hate about foil is that. It never wants to go back in there the way it came out. Just, just saying, just saying. Okay. Anyway, gonna be using a lot of the paint um, and everything. Also, again, my favorite gesso, heavy gesso. I'm really excited to be using this 3D gloss gel. Um, I think my idea is really gonna pop. I think it's. Uh, I have a really good. I have an idea of what I want to use this with and I'll show you. Also, I'm going to be using various stencils. Um, some are by Finnabar. They're the 6x6 elemental stencils. Um, and I took them out of the dang package and I can't tell you what which one I'm using here. I'm assuming here's one. I also pulled out some Tim Holtz stencils. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here's a Primo one. Yes, my stencils are dirty. I don't, I don't, I'm scared to scrub them or clean them uh, because the last time I did that, I ruined one. So, um, but I will eventually have to clean these because they've got stuff all over them. Yeah. So, again, various stencils um, that I pulled out. I'm hoping to build my stencil collection uh, this year. Uh, Prima has come out with some amazing stencils I would love to try. Also, okay, yeah, this is a paper pad. Uh, this is Prima's paper pad, but me telling you what collection this is, I can't tell you because it has been so long since I have worked with paper, and I'm hoping to change that as well because I know paper is starting to make a comeback. And uh, but this definitely is a Finna, not Finna bar, a Prima paper. Um. And I'm just going to be, you know, layering, doing all the layers and everything. And I'm hoping everybody enjoys this process. Um, yes, this canvas will be uh, a autographed uh, canvas that I will be selling in my Etsy if you want it. Um, I can't tell you the price of it right now because I don't know what I'm going to be doing with it. So, um, again, um, each step that I do, I will come on and explain to you what step I'm about to do and then I'll do that step you know, the the video will be fast paced because it takes me up to six hours uh, to do a complete Finnabar canvas um, you know six plus hours because I have to allow things to dry I have to allow steps to dry yes you can you can use your heat gun to heat them up with some cases which will probably be most cases with me here in this but there are some things you just need to let dry on natural uh, depending on the medium you're using and the product you're using so um, I will explain that in each step and uh, pretty much everything could be self-explanatory um, so the first step um, this is just a canvas that I got as you can see this is okay this is the plain look but when you flip it over it's white so it's already pre-treated with gesso so it's already prepped to do whatever it is you want to do okay so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start building my background and I'm going to choose some paper from this line and I'm going to you know like I'm looking at the patterns here of what I want to use so I might use this sheet here because it has words um, I like this pattern here and then um, you want to definitely look, you know, look at your paper 
and everything. And look at the patterns you're wanting to put onto your. I'm definitely going to use this one. I wonder why it's got that crease in it. That's weird. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin just um, probably taking my scissors and start cutting some paper. I know some of people are very skittish when doing this, but I've stacked them all up and I'm just going to start cutting squares. Um, I don't want them perfect, so as you can see here, and then I'm just going to start cutting them up like this. Ouch. Ugh. I have carpal tunnel in my hand, and it, sometimes it kills me. And then what I'm going to do is start gluing these down uh, with Mod Podge. Um, you can also use um, texture, let's see. You can use heavy body gels. You can use anything like that to um, do Mod Podge. But I'm going to use, this is a Mod Podge that Vanessa sent me. I love it. It's all small and I, it's, I like working with small containers sometimes, you know. Don't mind me. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to glue these pieces of paper down and in so many directions and different ways and everything. And then once I get those glued down, then I will come in and explain my next steps and everything. Why is everything got to be so damn difficult getting off? Lord. Okay. And, uh, excuse me, my nose is just running like I don't know what. Also, I'm going to be using my favorite brushes now. These are the Finnabar um, style brushes because uh, they have um, the paddles, different paddles on the ends of them. Um, there's a, a large collection. Um, she's got several sizes. Oh, hang on a minute. Different um, ways to like use uh, the stuff and just, you know, make little marks or whatever. Uh, I am going to be using those. These are our uh, Art Basic brushes from Prima. They are designed by Finnevar herself. And then after I get this done, then we'll go to the next step. So um, I'm excited because it's been a while since I've done one of these. And so I'm just going to cut this paper up like that. And just go for it. That's one thing you get. You cannot be afraid to do. You just got to go for it. Because sometimes things are just, you know, I've done projects that are out of my comfort zone. And um, Finna Bar Style is one of my favorites. And uh, it's just, it's very forgiving because you, as the artist that does this, um, you know, you can, there's just so many ways that you can do this and, and you, you really, you can't mess up. So, um, again, we're going to go through the steps and uh, let's get started.
Okay, the next step is, is you're going to prep your um, image. Now, this image here is called the Peacock Queen, and um, it's ready over on my Etsy to purchase. And when you purchase it, it will be on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. I have printed her on regular um, computer paper, uh, you know, just regular computer paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run her through my Xyron uh, Creative Station. I'm going to make her into a big sticker. Okay, and you'll see why in a moment. Like I said, Xyron is one of my most favorite adhesives. I had the pleasure to design for them for two terms, and I miss it. Oh. So, um, now you're going to get you a piece of chipboard. Um, this is just a thin weight chipboard. Um, and what you're going to do is, is you're going to, now if you don't have a sticker maker, you can glue her on. Uh, you can use uh, things like, uh, you can put some Mod Podge down and very thin layer of Mod Podge and then lay her on there. Um, you can do that, or you can uh, use a um, tape runner or anything of that. But in all honesty, um, if you're going to be doing stuff like this on a regular basis, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you um, investing in the Creative Station. Um, I love Zyron's product all over. Just amazing. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to cut her out. And I cleaned the edges up very well in the digi um, so that the cutting will be uh, not painstakingly awful. But the only thing I would say is right here at her crown. Now you have the option, which is what I'm going to do, is I left the crown as an option. But I'm going to be doing Finnabar with her. So you can actually just cut the, the crown off or you can cut the crown out and use it in your Finnabar. So my option is, is I'm just going to cut the crown out. Um, but again, you know, it, that's a, an option. If you like the crown, keep it. If you don't, you don't. So, and then I'm going to cut her out. And then that will give my canvas uh, time enough to dry. Um, it's pretty much dry now. Um, and as you saw, um, and the pieces that are lapping over, you just want to go around and you want to go ahead and snip those off and everything. If you had a few lapping around like I did, and as you see, it's not perfect. I did leave some of the canvas showing in the background. This is just a step in building the background. So, um, again, it's not perfect. It, there's no rule it, for it to be perfect or anything. So it's pretty fun. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and cut her out, which I'm not going to show you me doing that. And then uh, we'll start the next step. So let's get started. Okay, 
I went ahead and done a doily stencil right here in the uh, the mold and paste. Um, these are still dry. I mean, you can touch them and stuff, but they're going to take a little while longer to dry. But that's not going to stop me from working uh, my other things. I have cut out uh, this uh, Digi. And I have decided I'm going to put her about right here. But before I do that, I am going to decoupage... Uh, and build up some more background. So I'm going to use cheesecloth and some fibers that I've saved from previous projects. These are fibers from a material and this is some cheesecloth so I'm going to decoupage this stuff on there because I do want some more um, texture. So you're going to see that process as well. So let's get started. Okay, you've seen me put a lot of texture onto this little canvas here, and um, I'm going to go over with you. As you can see, this is starting to dry, and it's starting to become opaque. I mean, not, and then it's going to go clear. As you can see, the edges are starting to be clear and everything, and once this is completely dry, this is that 3D um, transparent gel. Once it's completely dry, you will be able to see the images underneath each triangle. Now, I also used uh, white uh, mold and paste, and I used some of the uh, silicone edges on these paint brushes, which are amazing. And uh, also, I layered down uh, cheesecloth, and you saw that, and I put on a big piece of lace here and a piece here because I wanted to add some more texture, and I have got about 20 bottles of <laughs> 
I picked out uh, for uh, from Lindy Stamp Gang that I'm going to be on here. And then because this is considered the Peacock Queen, I chose Peacock Colors. Uh, you know, your purples and your greens and a little bit of uh, maybe a touch of pink or maroon. And uh, definitely will be using um, the beautiful color from uh, the Art Alchemy acrylic paint. This is called Metallic Gold or Antique Coin. It's Metallic Antique Coin, I'm sorry. And uh, it's a beautiful color and I think it's really going to make this uh, canvas pop. So um, now the process is, is for me to just start squirting and spraying and then I'll put on the image design using some hot glue and then I will work around that as well. So let's get started. Okay, this is part one, of course, to tell you all the steps that I've taken to get here. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of texture on here. And uh, with the lace and with the uh, molding paste here. And if you're wondering what this gold is, this is the antique coin from Prima. Love this stuff. I mean, look how vibrant that gold is. This is one of the most vibrant gold acrylic paints I have seen in a long time. And trust me, I've tried everything from Krylon to you name it, trying to find that perfect gold. And I have, I think I found it. Um, and it's by Prima and uh, it's called the Antique Coin. Now, if you want, um, any of these particular products and you can't find the products in which I'm using uh, let me know and I'm probably offer them in my store or um, I could help you find them uh, depending on where you live and how much how much cheaper it would be to ship um, now this right here that click remember the 3d clear gel I was telling you about Okay, well, this is still opaque. It's still drying, and it will continue to dry. Um, and then once it gets done, what I'm going to do is take a little wet rag, and then I'm going to rub over it and get all of the spray color off of it so that you can see the background of those papers. Um, and I'm really excited to see the results of that, but it's got to completely dry. Um, I went ahead and glued um, this down. And I cut her out and I went ahead and glued her down um, onto here. And I am very particular when it comes to my canvases. I can't stand any little, like, any little boo boos on it or anything. And I see a little piece of glue. It's driving me nuts. Um, very particular. Um, now here, this is the boo-boo I did, um, and it will be covered up. Uh, now these are just paper doilies that I got from Vicki. Um, she sent me a crap ton of amazing stuff, and I, in fact, I'm going to be using a couple pieces in this piece and everything. And uh, um, But these are just paper doilies that I wanted to put down right there. And uh, I'm going to be pulling out different uh, pieces of metals and flowers. I'm going to be using flowers um, from the Prima Flower Box Collection. You get 24 pieces in here, and that includes leaves. So, yeah, because I opened up the other one, and it had leaves, and I was like, oh, yeah. 
And see, these already have gold on them, and that gold will resist the spray and still shine through, which is what I love. And um, also these types of flowers, and throw some of them in there. That's why I bought these. And um, also, you know, I'm going to be using some uh, micro beads. I might use my blue ones instead of my orange ones. Um, but this is the Peacock Queen. That's what she's called. And uh, that's why I wanted to go the Peacock Colors. And as you can see here, as I'm wiping off the the blue, the you can start seeing the the paper underneath which is really cool I like that part um, but this is part one of this canvas and um, then part two will come along and that's when I'm going to add some more textures maybe definitely going to be adding a bunch of you know like metal pieces and you know just different things like you know you can take some kind of metal piece like this and you can create a huge flower kind of like that this is jewelry just broken pieces of jewelry you know like something elaborate like that um you can do all kinds of stuff so that's the fun part was that's what i love about finnabar is that the textures and the mixed media and everything uh, goes together very well so Stay tuned for part two, so this should help you get started on part one of building your canvas and getting it prepared. I'll put a link in the description box down below for you to grab the photo here over on my Etsy um, and get prepared to do your very own. Oh, and another tip, um, what I'm doing here is like I will run my hot glue gun underneath the canvas here like that and the, what that does is that just helps uh, seal those areas right there and that's what I'm doing here so I will see you in part two of this video alright